Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Today's hero is Paul0220 in the Mighty Mighty KV-2. It is a very strong tank. And it's assault mode. Assault mode battles only last a maximum of 10 minutes compared to the usual 15 in a random battle, but let's face it, most battles in World of Tanks are over in 7 or 8 minutes anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference. Paul's on the attacking team, and in assault mode the attacking team wins. Well, it's exactly the same as in a random battle, by either capturing the enemy base or destroying all of the enemy tanks. The defending team, however, only have to be alive with their base uncaptured at the end of the battle, and they win by default. Oh, look at the looks, giving him a push. <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to talk about in today's battle, though, is... What I feel is a bit of a lost art. Target prioritization. And Paul's going to be demonstrating this during the course of this battle. What I mean by target prioritization is how do you decide which target you're going to shoot at first if you've got more than one thing to shoot at? And the number one rule is very, very simple. Shoot at what you can kill. I realize this sounds incredibly obvious, but well, you'd be surprised. If you've got a choice of targets, and you can kill one of them with your next shot, that's the one you shoot at. There's more to it than this, of course. For example, I've lost track of the number of steel wall medals that I've earned by simply being shot at by an enemy tank that doesn't have a hope of penetrating my armour when they could be shooting at the allied tanks around me that they can. So the number one rule, shoot at what you can kill. The number two rule, shoot at what's trying to kill you. Assuming, of course, that the tank shooting at you is following rule number one and they can actually kill you, if you've got a choice of targets in front of you and one of them's shooting at you and the others are ignoring you, then you kill the one that's shooting at you. So what happens if neither rule number one nor rule number two applies and you've got a bunch of targets in front of you and one or more of them are shooting at you and you can't actually kill any of them? Rule number three comes into effect. Run away and hide. Find something that you can actually shoot at and kill. Failing that, drop out of contact and just spot for the tanks in your team that can actually kill the targets that were trying to kill you. Follow these three basic rules and it's likely, if you're not already following these three basic rules, that your success rate in World of Tanks is going to increase dramatically. Of course, I do realise that this is all easier said than done, and unless you're carrying the equivalent of a tank encyclopedia in your head and you know the armour thickness and weak spots of every tank that you're likely to be facing, and the actual penetration values of the shells that you're firing at them, you might not necessarily realise that of the tanks in front of you, only some of them you can actually penetrate. But if you've fired at the same spot on the same tank for, I don't know, three or four times in a row and done no damage, maybe take the hint. This is clearly not a tank that you can kill. You are violating rule one. Of course, when you're in a KV-2, there's no such thing as a tank that you can't kill. <laughs> And that's why we love it so much. Yes, AMX-40, how good's your armour now? <laughs> the Mighty Duck, not quite as mighty as he may have been led to believe. Oh, this tank is glorious. And they do keep trying to nerf it. Wargaming, well, they don't nerf the KV-2 specifically, but a tank that relies as heavily as it does on the power of its 152mm high explosive shell, I'd be lying if I said it didn't suffer with every consecutive high explosive nerf that the game's introduced over the years, but the KV-2 has still got it. Which is fortunate because this situation is deteriorating rapidly. There's only two of them left alive over here, and there's at least seven enemies on the other side of these rocks. The enemy team are definitely advocates of the principle that the best defense is a good offense. Things are not looking good. I mean, the, the scores are even, but there's only two of them over here. And they've got almost all of the enemy team. And that Stug is looking like a one-shot kill. To there he is. Right, yes, okay. I spoke too soon. So, now it's just Paul against six enemies. And that Churchill is a tough nut to crack as well. It's very heavily armoured. Okay, um, <laughs> finished off by friendly artillery. Five enemies. This, however, is one of those situations where it's not so much that Paul's stuck here with all these enemy tanks. All of these enemy tanks are stuck here with Paul, because Paul's in a KV-2. And if they'd all rush him at the same time, he'd probably be in a lot of trouble. 
but it always seems to be the tanks with the least armor who take the most damage from the high explosive shells that are ones to put their man pants on first. They're all coming for him now though. Okay, target priority time. SU-76? Actually, no. Let's nail the tank destroyer that actually has a chance of penetrating the armor. There goes the WZ-131. Now it's the SU-76 and the Panzer IV. Now both of these can technically penetrate his armor, which of course is why he's angling. But the Panzer IV is going to do more damage if it penetrates. So choice of two targets, and he can kill both of them, but he's prioritizing the one that's got the best chance of killing him, and that's the Panzer IV. He can obviously kill the SU-76 any time he wants. And the SU-76 has actually done some damage, but it's only doing a hundred or so damage per shot. The Panzer IV can do a lot more than that. The Panzer IV's had enough of this, he's backed off. Rule number one, shoot the targets that you can kill. He's only got one target to shoot at, so he kills it. Kiss goodbye to the SU-76, that just leaves the Panzer IV and the enemy artillery. Panzer IV is still the bigger threat, but he's dead. That just leaves Dirty Bertie from number 30, who has missed the shot. <laughs> then there's the Top Gun. I mean, clearly it didn't hurt that he was in a KV-2 in a Tier 6 battle, and also it didn't hurt that the enemy team did him the honour of all coming to him, rather than him in, well, let's face it, not the fastest tank in the world. Although the KV-2 isn't terribly slow, but at the same time, at least they didn't have to go tracking around the map at 30 kilometers per hour trying to chase them all down one by one, so thank you to the enemy team for being so accommodating. And uh, providing Paul with the Ace Tanker Badge, the Steel Wall, the High Calibre, and the Top Gun. And he did it all by, well, first of all, being in a KV-2, I mean, that doesn't hurt, but also following those three simple rules. First, shoot at what you can kill. If you can actually kill everything that's in front of you, then shoot at the ones that are actively trying to kill you first. Unless, of course, that's an enemy tank who's ignoring rule one and cannot actually kill you, in which case, go for the biggest threat. While also remembering, rule one applies. If there's a tank that you can one-shot, kill it first. It's one less gun shooting back. Even if it can't penetrate you, it might be a problem for the teammates around you. And if none of those rules apply, get the hell out of there and find something else to shoot at. Follow these three simple rules, and, well, assuming you're not already following these three simple rules, I guarantee you that your success rate in World of Tanks will increase dramatically. Failing that, just be in a KV-2. I mean, that, that works as well. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I've been in a Tier 9 battle in a KV-2 and finished top on damage done and experience earned. This tank is glorious. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope... Well, I hope that there aren't any of you out there who actually learned something from today's video, because this stuff is really kind of obvious. But, well, if you did, congratulations. Consider this a public service announcement. Consider it a service to the World of Tanks community at large. Although, going by the law of averages, I guarantee that there's going to be at least a few of you out there for whom the content of today's video has come as news. <laughs> Based purely on the number of steel wall medals I've earned, by people in tanks that have no chance of penetrating my armor, just refusing to shoot at anything else. So, yeah. It's all right, you don't have to admit it. It can just be our little secret. Until the next time, take care.